So any carbohydrate basically whatsoever that you pour down your neck on any given day almost certainly is going to end up being a problem in terms of this Randall cycle here. Here is why. Glucose in the bloodstream, glucose here at the top, outside the cell, in other words, that's been delivered to the cell because you've got glucose in your blood, you've got glucose in your blood, A, because of gluconeogenesis, and B, because you've poured carbohydrates down your neck in your diet as well. The glucose is transported from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell in on a transporter, a, a protein transporter called GLUT4. GLUT4 transports glucose from the outside to the inside. Then what happens is we have a series of reactions and we have two isoforms of another enzyme called phosphofructokinase, PFK, isoform 1 and isoform 2, and they function in order to bring the glucose down to the next step in the chain. So we then get a molecule resulting from those interactions there called fructose 1,6-biphosphate, or in this case, it's just called FRU 1,6P2. Fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Okay, fantastic. From there, a molecule called pyruvate is generated by some other enzymes, and then pyruvate goes through a series of reactions when you're using glucose as a fuel source, where it's broken down to a substance called acetyl coenzyme A in the middle here. Acetyl coenzyme A is the feed in, the fuel source, if you like, that runs a thing called the Krebs cycle, or usually it's called the TCA cycle. Sometimes it's called the tricarboxylic acid cycle. You will have heard of one of those terms. It's the main cycle that is used to produce hydrogen for reaction with oxygen in the mitochondria to create water, release energy, and that energy is used to make ATP. And the end results of that are carbon dioxide plus water. So basically what happens is the carbon hydrogen skeletons of the food stuff are split apart. The hydrogens are fed down one chain. The carbon is added to oxygen and that's what we get basically. That causes the Randall, not the Randall, the TCA cycle to proceed more rapidly because you're now feeding it with more fuel, the acetyl coenzyme A. And the first intermediary of the TCA or Krebs cycle is a thing called citrate. Sometimes it's referred to as citric acid. It's the stuff that you find in oranges and lemons and citrus fruit. It's also the first intermediary of the TCA cycle in, in the body. And then if there is a buildup of citrate inside the mitochondria because there is a lot of glucose going in there, then that citrate will leak out into the cell cytosol back into the tan area so now we're up here and if there's a buildup of citrate in that cell fluid that will directly deactivate pho phosphofructokinase 1 it will also deactivate GLUT4 what's going on here Judy why would it do that well sugar glucose inside our cells at a concentration above what our cells are designed to run on is toxic. It causes damage to protein structures, which is what a cell is. It's a protein structure. It causes damage to DNA in the nucleus of the cell. It destroys cell membranes. Basically, the disease diabetes is elevated blood sugar. Why does the blood sugar elevate? Precisely because the Randall cycle protects the more important parts of your body, the cells of the body, from that damage. How does it do that? It locks that door, the GLUT4. That is what insulin resistance is. It's your cell telling the external environment, the blood, we do not require any more sugar in the cell. In fact, if there was more sugar in the cell than there is right now, it would start destroying this cell. 